Hi, and welcome to podcast number five. I'm Shannon of Just Living Designs, and this is my uh, YouTube channel where I share with you uh, my knitting podcast, but I also have some knitting tutorials for pattern support. Um, some of those tutorials are public viewing for everyone, and some are just if links from within a pattern. So if it's very p pattern specific tutorials, I will only have a link in the pattern. It won't be public. Um, all right, uh, let's see. We'll get on to this. This is, like I said, uh, podcast episode number five. Um, I am coming to you on Thursday, November 16th. It's about quarter to 11 in the morning. I got, it's been a crazy day already. So, um, got a little later start to when I wanted to podcast. Um, Billings, Montana. You can find me uh, on social medias as Just Live in Designs on Instagram, Just Live in on Ravelry, um, or Just Live in Designs or Shannon Larson for patterns. Um, I have links down below to get to all my pattern pages for Ravelry, Payhip, and Lovecrafts. Um, all right, I think that's everything for the little introductions. Like I said, it's got a little later start today because uh, one of my kids is homesick <laughs> and I had to go to the grocery store and pick up, um, some stuff, you know, medicines and Gatorade and then COVID tests and luckily not COVID. So, um, at least not yet, <laughs> but there's so much crud going around right now. So you never know. Uh, my son was sick a few weeks ago. My husband was out of town last week and traveling, you know, airplanes. He came home with a bit of bug too. So everybody's just kind of having bugs here and there. Um, we're going to start off a little bit with a finished object and what I'm wearing. So you might recognize this because I think it's been around since the beginning, the first episode, but this is my home cardigan by Kadri. Um, I do have the pattern here. One last time I'll show it. Um, so it is a drop shoulder construction, uh, knit top down and she calls for an Aran weight yarn. I used uh, the Machalope um, by Wool Dreamers, the, the plate yarn unspun, and I held the two strands together um, for this entire cardigan. And the color I used was Grizz Claro. Here's the tag for that. So um, this is the first time I've ever used this yarn. I have enough, I just barely broke into this final plate. So it's just, just over three plates of yarn to make this oversized, big old cardigan. Um, impressive. And it is just light as air, you know, just over 300 grams for this giant thing. And it just feels like nothing. It feels like you're wearing a cloud. It's very soft too. And it's, because of that, it might pill a lot. Um, I've worn it a handful of times since I finished it. It hasn't pilled yet. Um, but yeah, it has, uh, let's put this stuff down for a second. So it is a V-neck applied button band. Um, you pick up the sleeves after you're, you know, done. And like I said, it's a drop shoulder construction. It has plenty of ease because here's my, <laughs> there's my body and it, comes out to there. So plenty of ease on either side. I knit the size two. My gauge was a little bit off. I normally would have probably knit a size three for the uh, ease that I like in an oversized cardigan. Um, I did not change the sleeves at all other than lengthening them because I have long arms and I like my sleeves to go down really far. And I changed the length of the body as well because again, I didn't want it to be slightly cropped. I wanted it to go down nice and far. There are four buttons. I only I only have three of them buttoned right now. And these I bought at Joann's. I actually put them on inside out. They're supposed to have this little like ridgy thing, but I liked them more plain like that. They're just wood buttons. Um, And yeah, so I love it. It's great. Uh, my daughter has already tried to steal it. Uh, she doesn't get to. She can wear it at home maybe every once in a while, but I'm not going to let her wear it at school just because it is kind of a gentler cardigan. Um, 
And I think that is about all for that. I will have all the notes on, you know, on what I did to change things on my Ravelry page. Um, the only other big change I made probably for this is just because of the type of yarn I was using. I did not do, uh, the bind off. It was supposed to be an Italian sewn bind off or a tubular bind off. I attempted on the body. My yarn broke. You can imagine because <laughs> it just breaks like there's nothing. Um, so I did not, I did not do that bind off. I just ended up doing a bind off on the wrong side on all my bind offs, which I like to use when, when my bind off is not a one by one rib because I just kept it in pattern. I just turned it the other way. So like for the straight edges, like the bottom of the body and the uh, button band, I just made sure I bound off on the wrong side. On the sleeves, what I do is I go all the way around my last round and then I turn it around to, to bind off the other way. But that first stitch I just worked on the because it was the last stitch. So I just slide that over to my other needle and then do the next one and bind off. And it works really well. It looks, I think it looks better. Uh, the wrong side of a bind off, I think looks better than the inside of a bind off. So that's why I do that. And it worked just fine. And I didn't break the yarn at all doing the bind off that way. Drinking some tea today. My favorite tea, Santa's Secret from David's Tea. It's like a highly caffeinated black tea with little, it has little candy canes in it, but it's like a sweeter mint flavor. It's very tasty. And this mug is uh, a local Montana potter. She is a Stone Cottage Pottery and Farm. I love her mugs. I have, I don't even know how many right now, and other catch-alls and carry-alls and different things and yarn bowls. She sells a lot of stuff. When she has, I would say follow her on Instagram or sign up for her newsletters because when she has an update, they go quick. So um, this one was, was one from two years ago, maybe. She started doing this um, batik style. Is that what it's called? I'm not sure, but it's really cool. Anyways, after Halloween, I always put my Halloween mugs kind of away and get out my wintry mugs. All right, we'll move on to some other finished objects. I have three other finished objects, actually. Um, let's see, the first one is my son's fall socks. Um, actually, I'll take one of these off the blocker so you can see how funny they are. Um, Okay, so this is the uh, Rose Hill Yarns in the Hot Chocolate Picnic colorway. I bought this a few years back, sock set. It was a 50 gram sock set, so 50 grams with a 20 gram mini. And this one, I did my uh, Shadow Wrap Peels two ways, toe up version with a three by one rib and then a one by one rib for the cuff. All the my son likes really, really tall socks. Um, and since I was playing with just 50 grams, I talked about this on the last episode, I like to start toe up so I can get the most out of it. Um, actually what I have left of the yarn for this, that much for the main, it was not very many grams, maybe four or five grams. And then a little bit more of that of the mini since I just used it for, well, about the same maybe actually of the mini. I have it written down in my Ravelry project page if you wanna know how much yarn was actually left. But yeah, so I did pretty good. And here is the socks unstretched out. Like, like they have been blocked, so they don't suck in quite as much as if they're not blocked, but they are, you know, and he likes his tall socks. so. Now that I've shown you, it's another pair of socks to wear and he'll be happy. Okay, and that was out of a bag from, I think I talked about this last time, these uh, Matter Root, it's one of their trundle bags and this one has a wax canvas bottom and a woolly top. 
I love them. This is a great sock size. This is our small one. All right, next I finished, uh, I think I talked about this maybe last time or two times ago of the purchase of this yarn, but the yarn is uh, Broco Vintage Chunky and the color was Yukon Green. Um, and I made a gift cowl for a nephew. So this is a pattern of mine. It is the Simply Bulky Cowl. It's free. I designed it a couple years back when I just needed a quick, uh, simple cowl for a gift. And I was like, oh, I should just write this up so people have it because it's not nothing difficult. It's just cast on so many stitches, do a rib for so long, knit for so long, and it tries to use up a full skein of bulky weight. This one, I used up most of it. I had just, a, you know, like seven grams left maybe of, of the bulky. Um, but I got plenty of height out of it. It's just under a foot long, I think. And it's just nice. Keeps the neck warm. Does nothing fancy. All right. And that I can get into the Christmas mail. Um, the other one that I finished is actually a new design that I'm going to have coming out. Um, I'm not sure when it's going to come out. It's, it's a revamp of a previous design. This is a DK weight version of my book nook, um, socks. These have not been blocked because I just finished them yesterday. Um, so they're just on a blocker right now. You can't see the texture as well when it's all stretched out like that. Um, but when it's not stretched out quite so much like I said it's just off the needles it's not very you can kind of see that crumply texture these are knit um this pattern is both toe up and top down has a shadow wrap heel in it so you can get both of those I um this pattern also has two different charts for one for each leg so they kind of mirror each other instead of being the exact same. And I used, let's see, I used Needles at the Ready, uh, Achilles Decay, and it's fall, y'all. And this is all I had left of the main color because I made them nice and tall. These are for my daughter. They're her Thanksgiving fall socks. Um, she loves DK weight socks, especially around the house. Um, so usually my DK socks go to her. And then I used um, Legacy Fiber Arts and their DK Weight Espresso Beans for the contrast. I've used this before in a different pair of DK Weight socks as contrast, and I have enough to make one or two more depending on how much I end up using. Um, you know, if I use it for both heels, you know, all three heels, toes, and cuffs, or like this pair, I only used it for the cuff and the toe. But yeah, nice tall socks again. Um, and once they get blocked, they'll even stretch out a little bit more because that's just what happens when you block them. I knit my DK weight socks quite tight actually because I'm not a huge fan of them being slouchy. And so I knit them on, I am a looser knitter, but I knit my, this pattern is for US twos for the main body of the sock and then two and a half for the cuff, just so your cuff has a little bit more stretch to get around wider calves that most of us have um but yeah they're great if you are a tighter knitter people you know that have done my dk weight socks in the past they'll go up to a three or even a four with the numbers that i have but like i said i'm a looser knitter so i get uh, a good dk weight sock gauge on twos all right so that those will get blocked and i'll get some pattern pictures taken and get that uh, finished being edited and then I can get it out to people. All right. Let's see. So that's all my whips. That's four whips. It's pretty good. Or four FOs, finished objects. That's pretty good. I'm quite impressed. I'm, I've got a few more gift nets to finish up and that's what we'll talk about in whips coming up here. All right. So let's see. First whip. I cast it on my daughter's um, Sunday sweater. This is a pattern 
Let's see, where's the front? So I did, I added short rows to it. So this is a pattern by uh, Petite Knit. Let's see if I can find the beginning page. Um, and it has like a textured yoke with ribbing and then just straight stockinette and like balloon sleeves. And my daughter really has been wanting this sweater for a while. So, and I had this yarn ages ago. Uh, let me get both of them out here. Um, and it's no longer actually in production, <laughs> this yarn. It's discontinued. It's the uh, Fiber Company Erin Moore. And this is the colorway uh, Liaden. Liaden? Mm. But it's a gray light gray and it's kind of got lots of flex in it because Erin Moore has like lots of different fibers and silks and so there's like kind of tweety bits and then I'm pairing it together with uh Biche Bouche uh Le Petite Silk Mohair in the gray beige color so it's just a very very light beige doesn't really change the color of the sweater so it's just very 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 light gray I like I like gray um, anyway, so it's got a fold over, uh, collar. And like I said, you do this. I added short rows to the back before I split for the sleeves. Um, just to, to make sure that it would fit a little bit more comfortably. It doesn't have short rows in the pattern. It's not difficult to add short rows, um, to patterns. So I will probably, I, I usually don't write down exactly what I do from when I add short rows to patterns because I've done another petite knit sweater previously, the anchor sweater that I added short rows um, in the same location. Um, but yeah, so it's a little bit longer in the back here than it is in the front. But yeah, I just casted this on last week. Whenever I finished this sweater, I casted this one on. So maybe it's been a little over a week. Um, I only, I don't work on it very often because I've got, it would be nice to get it done by Christmas. Then she could have it as a Christmas present, but I've got gift knits that I'm, uh, got to get some, some of those done. And then also patterns that I'm designing and just lots of work knitting. Um, this bag is from, I think I talked about them before, but this is from Rain, um, bags, uh, Rainworks, I think is what it's called. And this is one of their like older ones. This is a bucket bag. I don't know if they exactly have the same exact styling, but it's like an oiled um, canvas. And then this is bison hide for the handles. I think it, I don't know, not even sure if they use it like old belts or something, but it's just really, it's so supple and nice. Um, but it's a nice size bag for a sweater. It's just a bucket tote, no closures. I don't even think this one has any Oh, it's got a pocket on the inside. Okay. One pocket on the inside. Um, but yeah, it's great. And they're out of Montana, Montana makers. Um, let's see. Another whip is a cast on that I did earlier this week for um, my another nephew <laughs> needed a hat. So last, I think it was last year, maybe around Black Friday time or something, Hudson and West, they have some really good like American made wool and there's our just worsted weight and fingering weight. And they put out this like kit for sale for their Hudson beanie. And it was two skeins of two different colors of their weld, which is their fingering weight. And then they sent you the pattern, which is just a one by one beanie. Um, I'm knitting it kind of to specs right now with the decreases the way it's written. I might change them later if I don't like them on another hat, if I make this hat again or something similar, um, just because that's kind of what I do. But the first time I knit things, a lot of times I'll at least attempt it. Maybe I'll put in a lifeline and if I don't like the, um, the decreases, how they're looking, I will change them rip it out and change it. Who knows? But this kit also came with a little like tag that, ooh, as I throw it, a little tag that you can put on the 
um, edge of the hat for the Hudson West. You make it look kind of like it's store-bought. Um, anyways, so I'll probably put that on this hat since it's going to be a gift. If it was just for me, I wouldn't worry about it. But And this one I am using two, like I said, two skeins of weld. They're 50 gram balls of 200 yards each. And my colors are Midnight and Smoke. And these are not the colors I don't believe I bought in the kit. I had some other colors. So I, I, I like these two together because it made a nice, like, deep, dark marl. This Midnight is actually like a really, 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 really dark blue. <laughs> really dark navy. Um, so it's not black. And then the Smoke is almost like a taupey gray in my mind it's it's uh it's very pretty though I like it together um so this is going to be a fold over beanie so I'm knitting it I'll probably try to knit up most of this yarn so I'll knit it as long as I can get it really because the decreases don't happen over very many rounds so I should be able to but it will be a fold over beanie and I did um it just calls for a long tail cast on. I did an alternating cable cast on because I didn't want to do a tubular cast on would have been wonderful for this, but I didn't feel like doing that with double strands. So I just did an alternating cable cast on, which is a nice stretchy cast on that kind of mimics a tubular cast on. And it looks, I think it looks better on the inside, which is the side that's going to be folded up anyway. So it will look quite lovely when it's done. Um, this is knit on what size six? US six, four millimeter needles. Um, so yeah, it'll be done soon. I, you know, it's just a one by one rib hat. So at least it's on bigger, a little bit bigger needles and not finger and, you know, with the held double. It's a very, you know, very easy pattern. Um, let's see. My last whip is for class that I'm teaching at my LYS The Yarn Bar. And this is the Harlow Worsted Pattern by Andrea Mowry. I don't know if I have a good picture or not, because I just have so much. <laughs> I have one picture it looks like, but don't want to give you the pattern at all. So it's a brioche hat. She, her first one was the Harlow. Uh, her first Harlow hat was with fingering weight. This one with, is with worsted weight. And I am using two skeins um, of Loopy Mango Dream. One Dream and one Dream Tweed. So the dream is spicy hot pink and the tweed is blacksmith. You can tell the difference. <laughs> this is going to be for my daughter. She, I bought this yarn a while back. My uh, LYS is, um, did carry this yarn in there, phasing it out. But it's super soft merino, super squishy, um, very light and airy. I think it will very, make a very cushy hat. It is making a very cushy hat. And I just have to get myself up to, the, my first class was last Saturday with the students. And I have to get myself up to the crown decreases. I think I have a couple more inches to go before Saturday. I will get there no problem. This is generally, I work on this in the morning for a bit just to get a little bit of the work done. And then I will, you know, work on other stuff throughout the day. If it gets to the point Friday morning and I don't have it done, so tomorrow morning, I will probably just keep working on it to make sure I get up to the crown decreases because they're going to learn how to do decreasing in bri brioche um, on Saturday. And this bag is an old one from Tanny Casey. Uh, she still makes this style. It's kind of um, one of those that's like a mimic of the field bags. But my my strap broke <laughs> so I can still show it like that but I just I need to replace the the rope in it because it doesn't pull both sides to cinch it shut but this one's a lovely wax canvas with with a tartan plaid i like it um all right so that's all my whips right now of course i have more i always have more i have more work whips going on and i have more 
um, long-term lingering whips, but those are the ones that I've been actively working on since I finished all these other things. All right. So acquisitions, it's been a little heavy on the acquisitions, to be honest. Um, so shortly after the last podcast, like I said, I finished the sweater because I didn't have much left to do on that last sleeve. Was I on the second sleeve? I don't remember, but I didn't have a lot left to do. Or no, I just had the button band to do last time. That's it. So I didn't, all I had to do was the button band. So once I got the button band done, I went to Joann's to find some buttons. And while I was there, I always go back into the yarn area. And I noticed that Lime Brand Yarns had a newer yarn that I've never seen before. It was, it's called Local Grown, 100% U.S. wool. Um, it doesn't say exactly where the wool is sourced, other than it's in the U.S. And it's a worsted weight, uh, 100 grams for 186 yards. So it's like a, you know, most of Lime Brands, it's closer to that type of a yardage but it this is the color maple which is just a nice orangey red rusty red I um just wanted to give it a try I'll probably knit a hat out of it but figured I'd give it a try see how it how it feels it feels all right it's you know it feels rustic it feels like well not like crazy rustic I think I would have no problem wearing it anywhere you know but my kids that are a little more sensitive might um, then I also ordered on the Fat Squirrel had an update, her holiday update. She has another one coming up tomorrow, maybe. So maybe when this podcast airs, um, for just a wintry update, this was the holiday one. And I got a sock sack, her sock size bag. And this one was just really cute with the animals in the forest with the mushrooms and the little gnome guys more like santa gnomes because they're all in red but you know i just i love them and then the inside i haven't put anything in it yet but i will the inside has some of the mushrooms that are kind of on here but red so this one's a new Christmassy sock bag and this is actually my first bag from um Amy Beth of the Fat Squirrel, so I'm excited. And then, let's see, what else? I went to, well, whenever I teach at my local yarn shop, I always end up buying something because how can you not walk into the yarn shop and not buy anything? So I picked up a few things. I'm, in, I'm part of the Winter Wishes sock swap. So I picked up a few things for that, just starting to get that put together for my partner. And then um, I bought this i'm not even sure who makes this it doesn't really say i'm crinkling sorry um but a, a few, few different yarn shops have these now and this one says it's the scent is smells like i have too many whips but i'm casting on anyways and it's a, a lovely um woodsy smell it's also known as beech wood for the scent so i you know it's a little expensive for this size of candle but I figured one I could do. Um, and then I got some of my advents in the mail. Well, my only two advents in the mail. I um, generally do a fingering weight sock yarn, self-striping sock yarn advent every year. I've been doing it for, I think this is the fifth year I've done it. I've used different dyers over the years. I've done Two Sisters. I've done Kirby Werby. That one was funny because it was 2020 and it was a shitty 2020 for Schitt's Creek. Um, and then I did uh, the last couple of years, I did Woolen's and Nosh. And this year I decided to do um, Freckled Whimsy. Um, this is the same lady that I've been doing the club, the Wednesday clubs with, which actually I canceled just because I have so much sock yarn at this point. I need to start knitting it and not keep getting it but this is my advent and I just got the serendipity blend with no mini and split into two equal skeins so on the first I'll wind it up and I'm just going to knit I'm not going to use a contrast I'm just going to knit um probably toe up and just knit my socks probably two at a time because that's usually what I do and then I will probably have more than 24 stripes in the finished sock because I want them to get tall enough and then I'll just use the self-striping for the 
uh, heels as well as an afterthought heel. So I will knit one thread a day uh, up until the 24th and then beyond that I'll just probably finish them off. Um, but yeah, so that's my plan for that. And then I also didn't need more yarn. I did not get a mini skein set of minis, but I did get um, four Sunday, you know, Advent, whatever, four weeks of Advent micro sock sets from Legacy Fiber Arts. So this box has um, just, you've got four sets. So it's a 50 gram main skein with a 20 gram mini, all themed, I think off of their advent, their colorways from their advent, that their, their mini skein advent that they did this year, but they, the ones they like the best, they put into sock sets for this advent. And it's just like North Pole, something like that. Something at Christmas of North Pole or something to that effect was their theme. Anyways, I love these. I can make socks for either me, my daughter, or my son with this amount of yarn. I cannot for my husband or anybody else that has bigger feet. Um, but us right now, the three of us can all get socks. And I probably won't knit all of those up right away when I open them up. I might knit one or two during the season and then we'll just put the rest in stash because that's what usually happens. All right, um, a little bit about reading and watching, and then I'll go into um, a little bit of life stuff. So reading, um, last week, the second book of, from Rebecca Yaros of the, oh, what's the series called? Uh, I don't remember what the series is called, but it's the second book beyond Behind Fourth Wing. Iron Flame came out. I haven't seen the actual book. It is pretty epic. They did actually re-release the Fourth Wing with this black um, edging on the papers as well, and the cover looks more like this one as well. But I did. I already have a copy of it. I'm not one of those people that needs to have everything look alike. I'm I'm very okay with things being different. So. I did not buy a second copy of The Fourth Wing, but I did buy Iron Flame. I put my other book aside, Fairy Tale by Stephen King, and started reading this one because <laughs> I just couldn't help myself. Um, so I'm not re really reading Fairy Tale right now. I will once this gets done. This is my night reading right now. And then um, I am also listening to A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J. Moss. It's the final one of the um, Court of Thorn. A Court of Thorns and Roses, is that what it's called? Um, series, which I read years ago. I'm listening to it, actually. I listened to them years ago, and then this last book didn't come out, and I was on to other books by then. So finally, I'm listening to this last one. Um, so that's what I'm listening to on Audible. This is what I'm reading right now. When I get done reading this one, I will go back to my fairy tale for actual reading. Um... Yeah, very good. Um, picks up right where we left off. So if you know, you know. Um, watching, uh, we're still trying to get time in to watch Goosebumps. Um, I'll talk about it with life stuff, but it's just been hard to get everybody together to watch that. Um, that's a Disney Plus slash Hulu series. Um, and then... I personally have been watching the, I just finished actually last night, the second season of Welcome to Wrexham, which is the docuseries about um, Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhaney's purchase of a football club in Wales. And then I also watched Beckham. Um, that was a Netflix series, I think, a docuseries about Beckham, David Beckham, soccer player. Um, interesting. Uh, I didn't know all that stuff about him, so that was interesting. And then I started rewatching Parenthood because I just needed something in the background. And it's a really good series. Um, it's just, it's a really good series. Good characters. Uh, I like that one a lot. Um, and then life stuff. Let's see. Big one is my husband was out of town last week for most of the week for work. 
and like I said, he was flying. So he brought home a little bit of colds. He's not too bad. Um, and then my daughter had her first debate tournament last weekend and it's an overnight tournament. And so she left Friday from school. I think they got out of third period and then didn't get home until Saturday night, a little bit after 11. Um, and so, yeah, she was exhausted and still had homework to do, of course, on Sunday. And we let her sleep in on Sunday as long as she wanted to because she was just exhausted. But she had a great time. But again, being run down probably as well, she got sick. And so today she is sick. Um, and then, like I talked about the brioche uh, hat, I taught my first class last Saturday. And I will be teaching the next one this Saturday is, is the last class where we're just going to learn decreases. And it's it's awesome. Full class, seven people. So got seven new people brioching out there in the world. Um, my son has been just busy being an 11 year old boy. Uh, yeah, so we've been kind of busy. It's been hard to get everybody around to watch things. We just haven't had time. Uh, oh, the other thing I've been watching football and the Broncos won on Monday night. They won twice in a row against hard teams. They beat the Chiefs two weeks ago and then they beat, or no, three weeks ago because I think they had a bye. I don't know. Last two games they've won and then they beat the Bills. And so I'm just like, wow, we're actually winning against good teams. So that's exciting. Well, yeah, we're just getting into, um, I'm not a person that decorates for Christmas until after Thanksgiving. Might get the lights up on the house beforehand, but we won't turn them on. Um, just because it's supposed to be cold over Thanksgiving. Um, and this week, today it's really cold. It actually snowed a little bit earlier when I was out running errands. Not much snow. It's just colder today, but tomorrow's supposed to be back up in the 60s. So um, it's dreary and cloudy and chilly out today. Good day to wear a nice, cozy, warm cardigan and stay inside and knit. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I will be um, trying to get food and everything else for the Thanksgiving. We're just hanging out here this year, not traveling anywhere. It's just been, we've been so busy that just even thinking about like planning a trip somewhere to visit family or something or having family come here, it's just like, ugh we barely see each other. <laughs> it feels like, like I said, my husband works from home and I don't see him very often. Like he's in his office. He'll come out every once in a while, but we don't chat or anything for the most part. He's just kind of walks through the house to get something to drink or whatever. Um, we do go for dog walks on one of his breaks. So that's good. We can get the dogs out and I don't have to take all three by myself generally. Last week I did because he wasn't here. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's just, we're busy, busy people, just like everybody. And the kids are, oh, like I said, my daughter, you know, with everything with school and then speech and debate, it's just, she's very busy. Doesn't have much time to be around us. Um, at least this weekend, there's not a debate tournament. And while she wouldn't be going anyways now being sick, but there's not one this week, so she won't be going anywhere. Um, all right. I think that's about everything. Um, I will link all the makers of yarn and bags and everything below and mugs and stuff. Every links I can find, I will put down below. I will link my, uh, Ravelry project page for any of the whips that I talked about or what I'm wearing. I also try to at least link the patterns of the patterns that I use as well. So you can go directly to those patterns. Um, if you go to my project pages, you can find like the information on the yarn and everything there too, because I try to have all the information in there. I might not have a picture yet, but at least I put a pat pattern page or project page up. Um, like I said, you can find all my designs on Ravelry. I'll have links below. I also have uh, a link tree link where you can find the PayPal or PayHip and Lovecrafts. Um, where most of my patterns are on those. All of my patterns on Ravelry. I think I have most of them on those. I don't have the free ones on those because I don't think I can put the free ones on. At least I'm not sure. I can't remember if I can or not. 
the free ones are generally on Ravelry and free ones don't have nearly as much work put into them because <laughs> they're just a free pattern um so yeah I hope you all have a good two weeks uh have a good Thanksgiving for everybody here in the states coming up next week if you see family we'll probably at least you know FaceTime with family we got family all over the place so we usually try to at least chat or FaceTime with people and then you know we're we're into the final run of the holiday season is just crazy from there on out get your gift nets done um i do have a lot of like of course sock patterns but i also have a lot of hats and cowls that work great for gift nets um if you want to check those out in my um ravelry uh shop or like i said love crafts or pam um but yeah get your gift nets out get them get them done um i have couple more to cast on and then I'll be done hopefully um yay <laughs> I will try to podcast again in two weeks like I said true please try to support local makers um support the small makers you know don't as much as you can I'm not saying you can't support the big makers too but if you buy from a small business they do a little happy dance every time they get something support small support the independent designers <laughs> plug for me <laughs> support you know support put your money where you know your your mouth is and support what means something to you that's what I try to do at least um all right please like and subscribe I am up to over 500 subscribers I'd like to thank you guys all very much um I know I had a lot before I started doing the podcast because of my tutorials but I just I'm, I'm I'm glad to see our little little community growing so thank you very much um for subscribing and staying along with me all right well you guys all have a good two weeks and I will be back in two weeks tell you how Thanksgiving went and how we're getting into this holiday season all right bye y'all